Once you guys got another product review, this is the Asus Nook Pro, and uh, Intel used to make these called Intel Nooks, but they don't make them anymore. It's Asus have taken over the reins for making these mini PCs. So let's take a look what you get if you purchase one of these. Inside here, you're going to get obviously your VESA mount. This is to mount the actual unit to the back of the monitor. And this is what these basically are designed for office use, whether that's video editing or just general office work or general use. But this will allow you to mount it to the back of the monitor. And uh, again, you're going to get your power adapter here, which is going to allow you to power the actual mini PC. This is a hunt key power adapter. Output is 120 watts, 6.35 amps, and also 19 volts. You're going to get all your user manual warranty card and all that other usual documentation that you would get with any sort of purchase here. And you can see it all listed there. I've got some screws here. This is for your VESA mount and also for the actual drive bay if you wanted to mount drives. I'm sure that's what they're for. And again, we've also got our power cable here and this is a uk plug on here but if you're purchasing this in another country it will be a different plug and we have the mini pc itself so this is the asus nuc 14 rvh that's revel canyon ai mini pc it has a core ultra 7 155 h cpu with 16 cores 22 threads and a turbo frequency of 4.8 gigahertz it does come with the intel arc gpu on it 32 gigabytes of ddr5 5600 megahertz ram expandable up to 96 gigabytes one terabyte m.2 on this version and this is a pci gen 4 times 4 nvme drive inside here additional slots available for extra ssds windows 11 on here does support 8k and 4k quad display wi-fi 6e bluetooth 5.3 and thunderbolt 4 let's take a closer look at the actual mini pc itself so here we have the actual mini pc this is the tall version they do a shorter version as well so it stands a little bit taller than the average mini PC. So on the front, we have that power button and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and also a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port, which also supports charging. Honeycomb effect on the sides and a Kensington lock on one side. Let's move on to the rear of the unit. Here we have our power input. We have two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. We have also USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A and also a USB 2.0 port on there. An Ethernet port, which is 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. And we have also on here HDMI 2.1 ports. We have two of those on here as well. And we have that uh, SATA 2.5 SATA expansion slot on the bottom there. I think that screw hole on the top left is for holding the cable in. And there is a screw that comes in the kit and also expansion on the top there. It does have quick release access for the bottom of it. So you don't need any screwdrivers or anything like that. You just push that little slider up the top. And this is going to allow us access to the inside of the actual unit. This is going to be great for businesses who want to gain access to it all the time for upgrades and maintenance. So let's gain access to it and I can show you inside so you can see what it's like inside here and the upgrades available. So it just drops down once you use the slider button there. And once you get inside, there is a ribbon cable here, so be careful. So let me just put that part down. But this is where your thermal pads are with a copper plate on here. This is for cooling down your NVMe drives on here. There is room for a SATA drive in here, 2.5 inch SATA drive. You could put a hard drive in there if you wanted to, five terabyte hard drive if you wanted to, but a large SSD drive is probably the way to go. And you can see the connectors inside there. It's the tallest design. You just push it in and it's good to go. So let's take a look also inside here. So we do have also toolless access to the actual drives here. If you wanted to upgrade them, they've got these little push pins where you just pull them out, uh, these little plastic holders here. And all you need to do here is just lift it up and it will release the actual drive. So you don't need a screwdriver to, to actually uh, maintain this. And it will just allow you to pull the drive out using one hand here. Let me just get my other hand across. There we go. And it pulls the drive straight out. And again, this is a one terabyte Kingston drive inside here. I'll show you the speeds of this a little bit later on. But you can see the Wi-Fi card there as well underneath. And you also have room for upgrades for the shorter version of NVMe drives uh, that you can put in here. But again, that's giving you extra storage inside here if you wanted to use that as well. And that also has that tallest pin here. All you need to do is pull that pin out and drop the drive in and push the pin back in and you're good to go. So no screwdrivers. This is going to be great for quick upgrades and stuff like that and quick access. No, no toolkit needed for this particular upgrade or installation. 
So next up, we have got the memory here and uh, it makes it look like it's unbranded, but there is branded memory inside this actual unit. Let me just uh, pull this out. So I need to use my second hand here. So let me pop this out. I do have a tripod in the way here, so it just makes it a bit more difficult. But when I flip this over, you will see the crucial memory inside here. And like I said before, this is a 16 gig module. DDR5, 5600 sodium, 1.1 volt and CL46, that's cache latency, 46 here. And we've got two modules in here, so that's 32 gigabytes in here. And again, like I said, this can be upgraded to 96 gigabytes, which is quite a lot of memory. So this is going to be useful for video editing and also uh, graphic work and stuff like that. Here is our Wi-Fi card here. So I'll go ahead and put this all back together and we'll take a look at some benchmarks for this mini PC. So this will give me the option to show you the installation of the NVMe drive here. And all you need to do here is slot this in like so and push it down and then use the little pin to put it into place. It's that simple. I just wish all motherboard manufacturers would implement this because it would be a lot more easier to install those. So there is the lock right there. You just push that across and that will gain access to the actual mini PC. So let's power this all up. So the reads for this is 4072.67 and the writes are 3276.10 and that's for the NVMe drive. Let's take a look at some benchmarks for the CPU here using Geekbench 6. And I'll give you the full uh, benchmarks here for the GPU in the shortly. So the single core is 2296 and the multi core is 12901 for the actual benchmarks for the CPU. Let's run the GPU benchmarks real quick here and see what the score is. And that's 34,655 for the GPU benchmarks using OpenCL score. 4K streaming and playback is silky smooth. 11 drops at the very beginning, but there was no more drops after. And you can see here, it's super smooth. And this is going to be great if you wanted to run a Plex server because it has that Intel uh, CPU on here, which can handle your transcoding. And you can use it as a uh, Open Media Vault server or Unraid or Proxmox or one of those uh, types of servers if you wanted to. And again, this run Jelly Jellyfish 400 Mbps. 4K Ultra HD HEVC 10-bit file and show you what it plays back like. So you can see here, silky smooth, no issues whatsoever. I'll drag this across in a second to see what it's like from a standing cold start once it's been playing. And there we go, instant play. No problem whatsoever playing these particular files. And this is quite a difficult file to play for a lot of mini PCs. And this is handling it no problem. Let's go ahead and look at Cinebench R23 here. And we're going to be running the multi-core uh, score here and you can already see that there is a bit of a core thermal throttling going on and it's saying average of five percent and it also says package ring thermal throttling is yes and there's also a nine percent on there the other one has just jumped up to six percent so you are getting a bit of uh, throttle in on this particular mini pc when i run the single core test here the uh, package ring thermal throttling went right up to 50 percent Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm not going to do no gaming test on this because I think this is an ideal office mini PC. Anyway, this wasn't a sponsored video. It was sent out by Geekom themselves for me to review. All opinions are my own. No one is reviewing this video before it's released. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next one. Bye for now.